All right, what's going on, everybody? So, um, the importance of obedience. I mean, there are few things in your walk that are more important than obedience, okay? So, I'm just going to read you one line out of uh, the Bible. So, it's 1 Samuel um, 15, 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Okay, now I'll just point out as a little side note, sometimes obedience is sacrifice, or sometimes sacrifice is obedience. I mean, if God is telling you to fast, and you fast, well, that's an act of sacrifice and obedience, right? But in general, obedience is just obedience. You know, obedience is just God is telling you what to do and you do it, it doesn't matter if you don't want to do it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't make any sense to your rational mind, if God's telling you to do it, you do it. So um, the, the, the disclaimer I'll give before I go on is um, make sure that it's God. Like, don't just say, well, to do this doesn't make any sense, therefore it must be of God. Like, you got to make sure it's actually of God. But if it's of God, then whether it makes sense, doesn't make sense, you know, it fits the direction you've been going, it doesn't fit the direction you've been going, you just got to do what God tells you to do. I mean, you see this over and over again in the Bible. It didn't make any sense for Abraham to go offer up his son Isaac, right? Isaac was the son of promise. I mean, Abraham had been holding out for however, 50 years or something for Isaac to come along. And then, you know, Isaac's growing up and then God tells him to go sacrifice his only son. It doesn't make any sense. But Abraham knew it was of God. And so he went and he did it. And then obviously he did not sacrifice his son. He went up to sacrifice his son and God said, okay, uh, now I know you hear me. Now I know you trust me. You don't have to sacrifice your son. This was just a test, right? So obedience is just key. And, um, you know, the point I want to make really is that obedience is just... I'm getting off track in my, in my mind, okay? So here's what I want to say. <laughs> I know a lot of people want to know what are they supposed to do, where are they supposed to go, who are they supposed to marry, what's their destiny, what job are they supposed to have, all this different type of stuff. And this, the answer to all of those things lies in obedience. But it may not look like obvious directionally based obedience. Like if, if you're trying to figure out who to marry and God tells you move to this place, that could be part of it. Or if God tells you to get this job, well, you get this job. Now you're getting ready for your spouse. Or if you say, God, what job am I supposed to have? And then he puts you in a certain path to get married. And you think, well, okay, I'm glad to have a wife, but I wanted to know what job I was supposed to have. Well, she's going to help bring you there, right? So you just have to start today <laughs> with obedience. God, what would you have me do today? What should I, let me get in prayer. Let me get in the word. You know what? I really want to, I really want to hear from you. I really want to know what you want me to do. I'm going to fast. Please just make it clear what you would have me do. And maybe he's going to have you do something exceptional. Maybe he's going to have you do something mundane. Maybe he's going to have you get a new job. Maybe he's going to have you go for a walk. Maybe you just need to start exercising. I mean, maybe it's going to start there. You know, you're asking him what he wants you to do. What he wants you to do necessitates you being healthy. So you ask God what he wants you to do. And he tells you he wants you to throw away all the junk food in the house. Okay, well, I don't know why you want me to do that, God. But fine, if that's what you tell me to do, do it. And so you do what he tells you to do. And then, like I said, everything starts to unfold from there. So you throw away all the junk food. Now you get healthy. Now you're feeling better. Now he tells you, go apply to that job. Now, because you're in a healthier state, you will get that job and you can handle that job. If you were you know, out of shape or overweight or this or that, he, he may want to give you that job, but you're not going to be a proper fit. Uh, you're not going to have the energy to be able to do it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so you obey God on that one thing, and then the next thing, and then the next thing, and then the next thing, and it, and it never ends. I mean, obedience is like anything else. Let's say, let's compare obedience with diet, right? If you're having a very unhealthy diet, 
And then all of a sudden you start eating, you know, cleaner foods and drinking more water and fruits and vegetables and all this different stuff and you get healthy. What's going to happen if you go back to the old ways? You're just going to go back to the old you, right? You probably have like a buffer zone, a certain window where you can kind of fall out of line to a degree and you're still going to be able to maintain what you have. But clearly, I mean, overall, if you just completely go back to the diet you used to have, you're just going to go back to being the same person that you used to be. So with obedience, I mean, obedience is not something you do for a season, you don't try it out. You don't say, well, I'm going to be obedient for this year so I can get to my destiny. And then once I'm at my destiny, I don't need to be obedient anymore. It doesn't work like that at all. Like God takes you from glory to glory. So if anything, it's the opposite. Each level is going to require more obedience. Each level is going to be more difficult, really. You know, it's like you think of the Jews wandering the desert for 40 years, right? And, uh, they're just waiting to get to the promised land, right? They're waiting to get to the land of Canaan. Like they could have been sitting around thinking, well, let us just be good enough that God will let us go into the land of Canaan. And then once we get into the land of Canaan, then we can do whatever we want because we'll be in the promised land. No, 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 no. You read the whole rest of the Bible and see how that worked out. Like when the Jews were obedient in the land of Canaan, things were good and crops grew and food grew and you didn't have plagues and you didn't have famines, you didn't have all this stuff. And then as soon as they get out of line and go back to being, you know, whatever, adulterous or murderous or untrustworthy or worshiping pagan gods or, you know, all the things that it talks about, here in scripture that were problems, you know, throughout throughout the history for the Jews. Once they went back into those things, everything fell apart. And then God said, repent and come towards me and get out of your sins and tear down your idols and let me let me heal your wounds, let me make things new, let me do all these things for you. But it was always predicated on obedience. Once they got to the promised land, that was not the end, that was the beginning. Once they got to the promised land, that was the beginning. That, that was the start of like real life. I mean, the desert was basically school. The desert was, in a lot of ways, a piece of cake. I mean, compared to what they had to face after the wilderness. You know, even though they went into this better land and this blessed land, blessings become curses. I mean, you can read all about that in Deuteronomy 8 and Deuteronomy 28. When they did things good and they did things right, Things went well and things were right, but when they got out of line and started sinning and, you know, worshiping fake gods and all this different stuff, everything just fell apart. So again, my point here is that obedience is just a lifestyle. Uh, you don't start being obedient so you, can, so you can move on to disobedience. You start being obedient so you can grow and grow and grow and grow into greater obedience, right? So... I feel like this is very important and it's something a lot of Christians miss and maybe a lot of Christians don't get taught at church that, um, you know, a lot of Christians have this attitude, well, I'll just do what I want and God will bless it. And I'm just here to tell you it, it does not work like that. Like you need to figure out what he would have you do and you do it. If he says to wait for this person, uh, you know, to get married, then you got to wait for that person. If he says this is the job to take, then that's the job you take. If you're happy where you live, but he tells you to move to this place, then you got to go to that place. And if you're happy at that place and he tells you to go to this place, then you go to that place and you just keep going and going and going. And when, when you get to these places, or maybe if you get to these people or you get to whatever, it may not make sense right away. You may not look at it and go, oh, okay, this is obviously good. This is obviously right. There's, there's no ambiguity here. There's no question. This is clearly wonderful and perfect. It's probably not going to be like that. But if you get into the situation and you grow within the situation, there will come a point where you go, I get it. I get it. I see it. It all makes sense now. And then that is going to prepare you for the next step. And it's also going to give you uh, more confidence and faith in God. Because if you get put somewhere that makes no sense, but you know God told you to go there, then you're going to have a certain peace there. You're going to say, hey, you know what? I've been down this path before. I've been in these situations that didn't make any sense, but everything worked out. So I know I got to just stay in the situation, grow in the situation, and then everything will come out of it. 
You know, I'm not not one to quote uh, Joel Osteen a whole. I actually like Joel Osteen a lot. I mean, I know a lot of people will say he's a false preacher and all this different stuff. To me, I mean, Joel Osteen is the dessert in my Christian diet. I mean, I read a lot of stuff. I'm in the Word all the time. I'm watching lots of different YouTube videos, prophetic videos, and you know, fairly hardcore Christian videos that really get into some heavy topic and topics and stuff. So for me, I mean, Joel Osteen is my Christian dessert. I know he has a strong walk with God. I know that he is surrendered. I don't know that he teaches surrender, but I know he walks a surrendered walk with God. So um, I like Joel Osteen. But anyway, the, the quote I was going to give you from him was, if you get into a situation that just doesn't make any sense and you just want to get out, but you know God brought you there, Rather than say, God, get me out of this, say, God, what do you want me to get out of this? And that is exactly right. If you're in a situation and you know God's got you there, you know he put you there, or you've figured out now that you're there, that it's where you're supposed to be, then don't say, God, get me out of here. Say, God, what do you want me to get out of here? What am I supposed to learn? What trait am I supposed to cultivate here? Is it is it more dependence on you? Is it, do I need to start praying more? Is it, uh, do, you, do I need to start fasting more? Do you want me to be more resourceful? I mean, it could be something overtly spiritual, like he wants you to fast more, pray more, worship more, etc., it could be something that's a little more natural, like change your diet, exercise more, get out of the house more. I mean, it could be a multitude of things. But the point is, if God brought you somewhere and you know he brought you there, then don't try to escape. Figure out what it is you need to figure out, and then he will take you from glory to glory. He will take you from this step to that next step. So that's it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Um Seek God, obey. When you know what he's telling you to do, do it, and then just cultivate that. That That is your lifestyle. Do that day in and day out until the day that, <laughs> that you meet him up in the heavens. So uh, that's it. I hope this is helpful for someone. Uh, love you guys. Be safe. God bless.